Ride for some of these cannabis stocks, Tilray included. The shares popped 40% yesterday on news that the U.S. was planning to classify marijuana as a less severe drug. Now, this moved the entire sector, whether companies were exposed or not. Erwin Simon is the chair and chief executive officer of Tilray Brands and joins us now. And Erwin, I think it would be fair to say you would be in the not exposed today to these uh, possible changes. Is that a fair assessment? I'm not sure what you mean. And good afternoon, Amber, not exposed, but I think we would be in a very good place um, with the changes. Number one, as I've always said, we need to clear up all the confusion about cannabis in the U.S. And, you know, from a classification, reclassification from a Schedule One to a Schedule Three would be, you know, exceptional for the cannabis industry. And with that, it gives from our standpoint, where we have a big medical cannabis business, both in Canada and Europe, and let it enough expand that into the U.S. And again, this does not legalize cannabis from a recreational, but cannabis today in the U.S. is legal in 38 states. And the big thing is, Amber, it allows research development. It allows you know users to get prescriptions for sleep, for anxiety and pain. And just remember, cannabis today is classified as the same as heroin, LSD, cocaine, ecstasy, ecstasy. And again, if it goes to a schedule three, it's like Tylenol with codeine, ketamine. So this is important for you know users and this is important for the whole medical community within the US. And with Tilray being strong in Europe and Canada, it lets us bring our expertise to the US and lets us get into the US market in a bigger way. Does it allow, I guess that's what I'm trying to get at is does this allow you to take steps, you know, if and when this is actually rescheduled and reclassified, does this allow you to take steps to enter the US market in a way that you're not already? So today, anything that's GNP and our facilities are, we are allowed to ship to other countries. And hopefully with that, it would allow us to ship from Canada within Canada to the U.S. market and be able to market and sell Tilray medical products, Tilray cannabis within the U.S. markets. And, you know, we have infrastructure in place today, like I said, in Europe and Canada knows how to do this and very easy for us to transport that and take those strategies and take those markets and basically be selling medical cannabis within the U.S. market. And if not, we will find a way to make sure we're a major player within the medical cannabis business within the U.S. Would you be able to do that and maintain your NASDAQ listing? Do you have clarity on that? Well, again, with it being legal and not being considered a schedule of narcotic, I believe we would. Do I have total clarification? And I think with, you know, the USDA and HSS approving it, it would be federally legal for medical cannabis to be sold within the US. That would allow us to keep our NASDAQ listing. We've been very, very, you know, um, we, we, we've been very, for, very much forthcoming out there. We would not touch, have not touched cannabis in the US because it's very important for us to keep our NASDAQ listing. Mm -hmm. It's very important for us to stay within our bank and our bank covenants and that. So we have not been involved with medical or recreational cannabis in any way within the U.S. markets. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, there's uncertainty there, but with the people that you speak with, do you have any sense of the timeline of some of these next steps and whether this paves the way for other, you know, dominoes that need to fall like the Safer Banking Act? So I think everything would fall in place. I think this happens with over the next couple of months. I think President Biden would like to get this done. I think it would be a feather, you know, in his cap. But more important, this is something that needs to be done, okay? And you saw what just recently happened in Germany, which said in the U.S. that any doctor could prescribe medical cannabis for medical reasons. And I think there's something, there's so much confusion out there today even though it's legal in 38 states from medical, even though it's legal in 23 states from a recreational standpoint, it's not legal from a federal standpoint. So clearing that up, number one, 
Number two, and I come back and say the research and for patients out there that want to buy medical cannabis or want it prescribed, and now they know it's legal, it just takes that pain away that they can go out there and get it prescribed by their doctor and know they're doing something legally. The number one question I get from from analysts or investors about Canadian cannabis companies going into the U.S. is, why are you going to do well in the U.S. if you have no footprint there yet, when there are already so many operators in the U.S. at the state level that have huge market share? And I think you just said it. They're at the state level today, and their focus today is mostly on recreational cannabis in each state. And they operate, you know, stores. Um, they oper- operate and do their own growing. You know, Tilray today operates in 20 different countries and selling medical cannabis, you know, throughout Europe and Australia. Tilray operates in Canada today selling medical cannabis and recreational cannabis where it's legal. So over the last five years, we've put, you know, a lot in place. There's a lot of learnings, a lot of money spent, a lot of research has been done in both Europe and Canada to be able to translate that to the U.S. markets from a medical standpoint. I think that's what's important. You've talked often about the the rationale for going into beverages, particularly in the U.S., is about, you know, getting that distribution, having a presence there. Is this where you start to see some of that pay off? Is there distribution opportunity with the network that you already have with beverages? I'm just trying to see how, how it maybe fits together. So as you're well aware, we're the fifth largest craft brewer in the U.S. today uh, with our 12 different beer brands. We also have a spirits brand and we also have very much a hemp brand. I think where the opportunities, I'm not you know yet knowing today where the opportunities are with beverage from a medical standpoint, but I see there's tremendous opportunities in the beverage area with Delta 9 and hemp drinks going forward for Tilray with our large network of over 500 beer distributors and i must tell you you know amber we've had outreach from almost every one of our beer distributors already looking for drinks infused with cannabis how do they become a part of because you know one of the interesting things out there where alcohol sales are down where cannabis is legal in those states from a recreational standpoint so you know there's lots of correlations here and there's lots of studies that uh, we need to understand. But I think the big thing here is this is cannabis that are going to be sold that is regulated, that has to go through the USDA, has to go through HSS, would have to go through lots of regulatory. And I think that's what's important, that there's real regulations put in place here.